Hello, everybody. There we go. Hope you can all see the screen. Welcome to today's webinar for Tuesday, the 14th of April. Hello, everybody. Good to see you all here. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, just checking we're all set up. Um, you should be able to hear me now. Um, we were just waiting on a few people to join. Um, so it's good to see everyone in the room. Denisa, hello. Yes, that's right. We haven't started yet. Um, we always wait a couple of minutes just for people to come in. Um, thanks for being patient. Jane, hello. Mary, hi, Liz. Hi, everyone. Phil, Richard, good to see everyone. How was everyone's weekend? Hope it was good. Hope you all enjoyed the weather. Lovely, sunny weather. Nice and warm. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's good to see you all. So we've got quite a few of you in the room here. So I'm just checking everything's okay. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Ross. Great to see you. So today, Tuesday the 14th, um, for our small business support, uh, we're going to be diving into some things around promotions and email marketing and, and how you can set your website up ready for all of that. So we're going to be looking at that in a moment. Um, these are just holding screens here. Um, Josh isn't in this particular one. Um, he might not be in today's, but he'll certainly be in tomorrow. So it's um, back to normal with just me presenting. And um, if you do need any help, um, please do reach out to us. Um, we're back up and running. A few of, you, a few of us are working over the weekend, um, but uh, if we are a little slow to get around to everyone, we do apologize. Um, it's just obviously challenging times for everyone at the moment, but we're back up and running. And if you want any help um, with your business this week, then do feel free to book in a one-to-one -one or just a chat with us. You know, you can always just fill in the form on that page. There's a, there's a button on that page that says, uh, free one to one. Um, would quick question come in from Chris? Would AdWords campaign be advised um, to start before the actual sales? Wanted to yes. Um, uh, with AdWords or Google Ads as they call it now, they've they've renamed it from Google uh, Google AdWords to Google Ads. Um, yes, I'd always recommend running a Google Ads campaign, and the reason for that is because it is pay per click. And even though the search volume has potentially dropped, you know, slightly at the moment um, for some industries, um, having said that, some, well, many industries are seeing an increase in searches at the moment. So it's, 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 it's a strange time. Um, like, for example, we saw a bike shop the other day and, and search is going through, through the roof and, and inquiries are coming in um, all the time. So if, even if search volume is low, yes, do run a campaign on Google Ads. Um, so question there, should I run a Google Ads campaign at the moment whilst obviously it's slow, actual sales are not coming in? Um, yet you want to be running it now. And the reason why you want to run that now is because uh, we've mentioned it already. Uh, let me pull it up on my screen, if I may. But um, the reason why you want to run a Google Ads campaign is because of the consumer journey. And um, basically, it's, it's, it's a 90-day consumer journey. So people start... Um, at the search phase, which is what they're doing now. They may be planning ahead. Um, I've certainly done some searches at the weekend. You know, we've probably all been bored at the weekend at some stage. I've started to plan and research some of the things that I need um, in summer or even autumn. So I'm. Uh, so I don't know uh, about me, but uh, I'm. I'm thinking ahead, and I'm doing my discovery now. I'm looking for certain types of businesses that I'm going to need in autumn. So um, do make sure that you're found when people are looking for you. And the way to do that, the way to come up under many different villages, towns, cities, all the different varied keywords is is Google Ads. Um, so just to dive back. Yeah, I hope that helps. Um, quick question from Phil. Um, what do you think is the easiest platform to build websites uh, yourself that is also SEO efficient? Yeah, WordPress is quite difficult to use, isn't it, if you've, if you've used WordPress? Um, so what would I advise is the, the best platform? Well, there's a couple out there. There's, there's Wix, um, there's Squarespace, but Personally, Phil, um, I'm personally not a massive fan of them, and I'm, I'm trying to not be biased here. But I find um, I find that they're quite tricky to use at times. Now, 
Um, we, we actually uh, can, you can use basically our builder. You may have seen it in the webinars. You can use our builder um, and just build your own on, on that if you want. I find it the easiest to use and it's um, Google recommended. There's only two builders in the world. Um, and I checked this a year ago that were recommended and it was ours, the one we use. It's a technology from an American company. It's absolutely amazing though. It's so easy to build a website. Um, and Wix as well. Wix is, Wix, Wix is okay. The only thing with Wix is they're always, they've always got ads and, and things coming up and um, they're trying to promote their services a lot. So just look out for that. But yes, Phil, you can um, use our build if you want. Um, again, just go to um, the page, covid and um, and you will uh, be able to so infoserve.com forward slash COVID and you'll be able to get a one-to-one -one and we can sign, we can get you started on our builder. Um, we'd love to help you. Okay, so I'm going to crack on. Um, there are a couple of questions coming in. I'm going to try and come back to some of those questions. Let's get on with things. Okay. Um, Helen, I just saw your question at the end there. What what do we use? Well, it, it's it's ours basically. Um, so um, you may have seen the platform that I was using to build all these websites, um, uh, but it's 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 ours. It's InfoServes, and if you want to sign up, um, you could build your own website, and you could host your own website, and you can manage all your SEO in our web builder um and it's only 20 pounds a month basically so if you want to sign up and uh, for 20 quid then um we're happy to help um uh, fill in um the form on infoserve.com forward slash covid um obviously we'd love you love everyone to sign up um but it's literally 20 pounds a month and you can build your own website has all the seo in there um obviously it just needs you to do that work if you want a designer obviously you know, we can help you with that as well. Um, we've got loads to cover. I mentioned it uh, last week, what we're covering. Here's a few things on screen here. I'm not going to read these all out, but loads to cover. Um, have a quick skim over those bullet points. I'll have a quick sip of water. And what we're looking at today, um, when I get to it, <laughs> it well, we're going to be looking at email marketing and promotions and we're going to be looking at how you can set your business up for that which you're going to have to do soon and i'll, I'll explain why um for those that don't know uh we we're the uk's only google bing facebook and yahoo partner um we're one of only three in the uk to have the google premier partnership and microsoft elite partnership they are they're the two highest level of accreditation so for anyone doubting our advice and um, tips hopefully that gives some reassurance um, um, but we're, we're the UK's only um, company that has all of those different partnerships, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Yahoo. Um, we own a, a we, we built the thing called City Visitor as well. That's us. That's InfoServe. It's not about us. It's about you. So what we're looking at is email marketing. And what I want to show you today is some tips, um, my top two, three big tips. Um, and we're going to focus on, first of all, like I say, on email marketing. We're going to specific, I'm going to specifically show you how you can get more emails of people that are just on your website. And then I'm going to go into the creative, um, so the email and the landing page. So let's just dive in. Before I do, um, I just want to highlight something. on. I'm not going to read all this, and I don't expect you to read it either. I'm just going to highlight a couple of big reasons as to why you should be using email marketing. If you're a small business, um, and you haven't got an email database of customers, you need to start doing that today. Um, because um, the message on email is apparently five times more likely to be seen, um, your message five times more likely to be seen than on Facebook. Um, it's 40 times more effective at acquiring new business than it is on Facebook or Twitter. Emailing 40 times more effective. Just looking at the last point, for every one pound spent, email marketing generates 38 pounds return on investment. And we see that as well. It really does work. So if you're not using email marketing, or if you wanna know how to do it better, then maybe this one's gonna be good for you. Um, it's Tuesday, we've just come back from the weekend. Um, we're keeping this one nice and simple because we've got a lot of heavy stuff coming this week. We've got a lot of stuff around um, Google Ads. We've got some more about Facebook ads and uh, Facebook targeting. Um, so we're going to go into some more heavy stuff this week. But today we're just looking at emails and promotions, um, which is really going to help those businesses 
um, get better at this. So email marketing. And what I want to focus on first is actually getting signups. So how can you get more signups? And the reason why this is so important is because it plays a pivotal role in the consumer journey. What we've been looking at last week and the week before was how you can get your business found at the search stage, so the bit right at the start, the discovery stage, um, how you can get your business found at the discovery stage. Um, so we talked about organic SEO, so search engine optimization. We talked about your Google listing and your Bing listing, which is equally as important. But what people do is obviously they tend take time to research about your business. And when they've stumbled across your website at the start, you need to try and get their email address at that first point of landing on your website. How can I want you to all to think about today, how can you get more people to leave their email address with you? Or how can you get more emails from people looking at your website? Because what you need to do is once you've actually acquired that first um, time visitor, so that, that person in the discovery stage has found you, you need to try and get their email or get their data so you can retarget them. Because if you don't retarget people that have landed on your website, you're losing a massive percentage of potential inquiries. And the reason why that is, is because over 90%, over 90% of first time website visitors don't convert into bookings or customers. They don't in convert into inquiries. That's over 90% of first time website visitors. Why do you think that's so high? Well, it really, um, from, from research, is because people forget, leave it, they see a competitor, uh, they 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 don't come back to you because, like I say, their their mind has has wandered else uh, wandered off onto something else. Um, what you have to do is retarget them, and so this email marketing phase is part of that retargeting. And when people are researching or looking about your business and talking to their friends, then is that's the time to then email them. And of course, this applies to past customers as well. So people that have already been your customer. So if you've got an email database of your customers, this is going to be really useful. So let's just say you have no emails in your database. I'm sure most of you have some emails or an email database of some kind. But let's say from today, we want to get you more emails and more, pe more people, more signups. Well, the, the way to do that is to, to maybe have, for example, a pop-up on your website. And what I would recommend is you get a pop-up or a section on your website that, that's encouraging people to leave their email address. Now, this is really powerful. So if you haven't got one of these on your website yet, really do consider it. So here's an example of a company, a screenshot here of a company that has uh, a pop-up that comes up on their website and it says, enjoy 10% off. It's a really compelling offer with one field that the, the visitor has to fill in, just one field, and that is crucial. It just says, enter your email here. That's the only field, um, bit of data that this company is asking for to get 10% off. Once they sign up, they'll, they'll then that email will then go into their database and that company can then email them with, with the 10% off offer. We've all experienced this at some stage, I'm sure. Um, or you could, exp or you could have the name and email address. But here's another good example of a pop-up. Um, it is for a different company, um, and they're doing a competition, and it's a competition to win free shoes. And so, the one before was get ten percent off. But here's a good way of getting emails: doing a competition. We did this once. We did get a free website. And we, uh, our lead designer built a free website for the winning company. And we ran it for a month. And we had over 500 businesses sign up. 500 businesses. So on our website, which, um, which what we did was put a little pop-up saying win a free website. And we had over 500 people leave their email address to get, to get a free website. Was that worth doing? Absolutely. Um, the return on investment on that marketing strategy was so incredible. And um, think about how powerful that could be, having 500 emails of people that are interested in the services that you offer. And so there's another one there, um, another pop-up um, example. Sign up today, get 10% off your first order. Now, I just want to highlight another example that you could do. It could just be sign up for our newsletter. 
And um, when you're mentioning about your newsletter, give a reason as to why people should sign up to your newsletter. So that imagine the same pop up, but it says sign up um, and and register for our newsletter, a monthly newsletter, whatever it may be. What? Why should someone do that though? Always give a reason for someone to sign up to your newsletter. For example, to get free tips, to get free help on how to you know example 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 so always give a reason a benefit for someone signing up to your newsletter okay um so just on that note if i may um right yes a couple of questions because i knew uh these questions would come up do we need to ask for permission do you need a checkbox to say um uh get permission to um uh, uh, do you give consent for us to um, use your, your data for email marketing? Yes, you need to have a checkbox is what I'm trying to say. So yes, utterly, you do need to have a checkbox box that gives, um, uh, gives you consent to then email them in future. Um, another way of putting it is um, I consent uh, to the company's privacy policy and terms. So you can have all this information in your privacy policy, but having a checkbox just gives gives consent. So yes, you do need to have, make sure they express permission to do this. Um, da, 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 okay, so how many times can you email before you give up? Um, well, you can certainly email um, you can, you, you should do three email sends. So what I was going to say is always start with your initial email, but follow up two or three times, um, uh, because you, you, sending it once won't capture everyone, um, and won't get all the opens and won't get all the clicks. So make sure you do it three times. Um, okay. So everything's, everything's looking good. Everything's looking good. Um, just checking, uh, I'll come back to questions. There's a few more questions in there. I'm going to come back to those questions shortly guys so um let me just continue with this and then we'll just go back into the questions as we go along um so make sure you have a um uh, a little checkbox um on these examples i recognize that there's no checkboxes but uh, i presume i think these screenshots we took them before the gdpr rules apologies for that make sure you do have a checkbox okay so um what you need in, in a nutshell is a very clear and engaging headline um, and you don't want to be getting a lot of asking for a lot of personal information. Keep it really simple. So in the fields, just ask for the email address if possible. So don't be asking for name, you know, telephone number, address. Don't do that. Just ask for the email address if possible. Um, make sure the design of that pop up matches your website style. So if you if you're creating a pop up. Um, maybe you might need to ask for someone um, to help you with that, but make sure it matches your website. Um, in terms of the actual uh, email, what we're, what we're thinking now is we've got people signing up to your um, subscription. You, you, they've subscribed to your business. They've consented and given their email address. Fantastic. If you've already got a load of customers that you've worked with in the past, I hope you've been collecting emails because what I would also recommend is you start to email them. And one of the things you could do if you've got existing customers is a referral scheme. So think about maybe you could go, hey, recommend a friend and get whatever it may be. So referral schemes for existing customers is always a good one for them to recommend new people to your business. So think about the existing customer pot, the existing email database that you've got. How can you target that database? Referral scheme, special offers, loyalty scheme. Um, but let's have a look at how we actually build the email itself. The email needs to be mobile friendly because most of the opens on emails will be on, on, on a mobile phone. It needs to have a clear headline and, it need, and if, if possible, make it personalized, okay? So um, when I say personalized, if you can, make it uh, addressed to, the, to that person. So hi, Matt, um, here's 10% off. Blah, 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 blah. So make sure you use their first name if you can. So um, your email provider, um, things like uh, MailChimp or Campaign Monitor, will allow you to drop the first name into the email. It's really easy to do. Um, all you need to do is when you upload your emails to the um, platform, like uh, MailChimp, when you upload your emails, make sure you've got a column for the, the, the business owner's name, the first name, for example. Okay, um, and obviously we need a clear call to action. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on, um, go online and I'm going to go to MailChimp. Now, InfoSurf, we don't personally use MailChimp. <laughs> I, we use, I was going to say, I, I do a lot of work myself on it, but we use Campaign Monitor. So I don't know if, if you guys have heard of Campaign, Campaign Monitor. It's just as good. It's, it's, I think they've got a free option as well. But I know that a lot of you use um, MailChimp and, it's, and it can be free um, depending on the amount of emails you have. Um, so MailChimp is a good one. And what I've done is I've mocked up um, a quick email here. Given that I've never used this in my life, um, it's not that difficult. Um, all you do is sign up to MailChimp and it will, it will allow you to select a template. And the template itself should just be really simple, a clear headline. So you can see at the top here, it says, for example, free 30 minute consultation. And this is just an example. Underneath that, I've got a button. So I want, I want to put my first button at the top of the email. So you need to have the button, the call to action, twice on the email. So here it is again, just there in the middle of the page. But I also do make sure to have it at the top, just in case people don't find the button lower down. So I've got a clear headline. Uh, and then I've got an image um, relating to, to what I'm offering. And then I've got, I have the content of the email below that. And obviously this is just example. This is just um, uh, dummy content, but effectively this is how short and sweet the email should be. It should be very minimal in, in design. Um, so clear headline, a button here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these, email, these email software platforms are very easy to use. You can drag and drop anything from here into the email itself. So the designing the email is pretty simple. And so make sure that um, it works on mobile. So just have a check of it and just make sure it looks good on mobile because most of your people will open the email on mobile phones so that, so that you can preview these and you can do quick tests of it. So the email itself, make sure really simple, really clean. Where's that email going to go? Well, um, that email um, is going to be received by your end user. And that person is going to click on the button on your email. Where's that person going to be taken? They're, they're going to be taken through to a landing page. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you've got a page in your website that is set up um, for people that are going to be clicking on this email. So you've created the email. And then what you need to make sure is you've got a page on your website ready for people um, that, that land from that email. And the, a landing page, a landing page is effectively a web page, a website page that moves prospects down your sales funnel. So they've come from the email and they've landed on this website page and it's moving them down into the sales funnel. It's got to be designed and optimized co to convert those prospects into buyers. And we've done previous webinars about how you can create the perfect landing page. So if you've missed those, just check back on our previous webinars um, or reach out to us and we can send you a link to any of those previous webinars. But check, make sure that this page is designed to um, convert and keep it simple. So, for example, um, the landing page is going to be really simple. And I'd recommend your contact form on the landing page being at the top of that page. We've talked about this before, so we're not going to go into the detail here. But the email was get a free consultation. The landing page will be exactly the same in wording. So if I was going to use the same wording, the headline on this landing page would be get a free 30-minute consultation. And then I've got a simple contact form just there at the top of the page. Make sure the landing page is really simple and has a really clear call to action. Okay, so just as I go back to the room, um, I'm going to take some of your questions really quickly. Um, if you are using something such as MailChimp, does that get around your email being seen as spam? Yes, it can do. They have, um, very, they have lots of technology in there to help with spam um, yet don't, MailChimp is fantastic for that. I, so it is very, very good. Must you have an unsubscribe button? Yes, uh, it's best practice to have an unsubscribe button on there. So I do recommend that um, at the bottom of your email, you've got uh, a little message to, to, to give the, the person an option to unsubscribe um, and, uh, and uh, or even update their preferences. Um, so yes, do do that. Okay, just looking through some of these 
questions. I'm going to show you another example, everyone, in a moment. Um, so let me bring up another example, if I may. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so reading some of these questions out. Um, you also need a link to your privacy to comply with GDPR. Yes, a link um, to your privacy policy on your website is an absolute must. So make sure you have that. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is show you another example, if I may. Um, and I'm just going to go to our uh, web builder. Just going to make it. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. So this is another web builder. And this is, uh, sorry, email builder. Apologies. And this is one that we use. It's called Campaign Monitor. Um, very, very simple, template-driven stuff. And at the bottom, um, here's an example of what people were say, saying about how you should have an unsubscribe uh, option. We personally use um, preferences and unsubscribe so people can update um, what they want to do with that email in future or they can just simply unsubscribe. Make sure you've got your uh, company name and address down at the bottom here, etc., etc. And make sure to mention why people are receiving this email. Um, so at the bottom of your email, just put a br really brief um, uh, reason as to why people are receiving it. So, for example, you are receiving, um, receiving this email because you've previously shown an interest oops, in our services. Um, or you are a customer of your business name. So just a real simple um, reason as to why they receive it. It's best practice. It's um, it, it stands stands you in good, in a good position for if you ever have someone asking uh, why they've received that email. So make sure you put a really brief um, description of why you're sending that email. Um, so building the email is relatively simple, but the content the content is is key. And so if if you're good at um, writing content, you've got a good grasp of English grammar. I'm sure we all have. Then go ahead and write that content. But I'd always recommend, if if, if possible, to get a, a copywriter or a content writer to write it for you, because there's nothing nothing beats a professional writing your email content. And what they're trained to do is write emails in a way that gets conversions, it gets people interested. So, for example, at InfoServe, we've got a few copywriters, content writers. Um, and um, they do a great job of writing compelling content, engaging content. Um, and and that's, that's something that not all of us have the skills and, or knack to do. So I'd always recommend using a copywriter to do the content. And even if you've got a designer, you know, maybe think about the design of the, of the image at the top there and the, and the actual text that you're going to put on there because design is a, a very skillful role as well. Um, so if you need any help with this, obviously, we're happy to help. But um, email marketing is very, very simple and very straightforward. Um, is there a difference between messages marked as spam and um, with with a different email creator? Uh, I'm not sure what you say now, Otelia. So um, um, if you could repeat the question maybe in a different way, um, I'll come back to you that question. Uh, yeah, I thought Google rank you down for pop-ups. No, um, Ananda, um, a, a good classy pop-up, one pop-up on your website is absolutely fine. Um, You'll find a lot of websites now use pop-ups. So um, make sure the pop-up isn't annoying. Um, so you can time a pop-up to come up on your website after a few seconds or after some browsing. So, for example, maybe after 20 seconds of browsing, um, example, et cetera, et cetera, you can have that pop-up come up. But, it, it, no, it's absolutely fine to have a pop-up and ask for people um, to leave their email. Alternatively, you could have a section on your website saying sign up to our newsletter. Okay, there's a couple of other questions um, coming in. Uh, da, 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 let me have a little look. Um, yeah, I, so going back to one question earlier, how many times should you email? Email the same email um, three times in one month, but vary it slightly. Don't just repeat the same email exactly like for like. So the first two, just tweak the messaging slightly. On, on the last email, if it's an offer that you're running or promotion, subject line should be last chance. And then the email content should be around the last chance. So vary it up, but same message three, maybe four times in one month. And that is fine. Um, 
Okay, so many of the emails end up in people's spam folder. Okay, well, um, it's uh, it should be no difference between Mailchimp and Campaign Monitor. Um, in both platforms, you can um, get uh, your email sender. You can actually uh, register your email address, um, authorize, and make sure that it's, you can make sure that it's actually set up to avoid spam. There is a way of doing that, utterly. It's a little bit more technical, and trying to explain it now might be difficult, but there are ways of avoiding the spam. So I'll pick that up with you separately. Okay, so guys, um, we, we're, we wanted to talk to you about email marketing and how you can collect emails from your website um, and how you should then follow up with an email. Um, what I wanted to say to you today, though, before I let, uh, before we end anything, is I want you to try and add a couple of things to your website. Because what we're talking about is how you can retarget people that have been on your website, right? So someone's landed on your website. We need to work out ways that we can retarget those people. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you, tr you sign up to and get Facebook Pixel. So install Facebook Pixel on your website. It's just a little bit of code that you add to your website. That's going to allow us um, and you specifically to track people that land on your website and then retarget them on Facebook. So we're going to be looking at that a little bit later on. Make sure you've got Facebook pixel on your website. Another thing to do is Google Analytics. So if you haven't got Google Analytics yet, please do install Google Analytics because we need to be tracking behaviors, on-site behaviors, what people are doing on your website, how long they're spending on your website. Um, but going back to the Facebook pixel um, point, it's basically an analytics tool. So similar to Google Analytics, but it's Facebook's analytics tool. And what it allows you to do is measure the effectiveness of your advertising by understanding the actions that people take on your websites. So you can use Facebook Pixel to make sure your ads are shown to the right people. So I'm sure a lot of you have already tried Facebook ads in the past, right? And I hear a lot of people saying they've wasted a lot of money on Facebook ads and they're just not getting enough return on investment. Well, having Facebook Pixel ensures that your ads are shown even more targeted to the right people. So people that have specifically visited a certain page on your website or taken a desired action. So taking a specific action to your business. And so you can retarget those people but not only that, you can retarget people that look like those people. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can retarget, um, say, for example, if I've been on your website and I'm friends with someone that has used a, a business like yours or has shown an interest in business like, like yours, your Facebook ad, once you've known that I've been on your website, can retarget my friends or, or someone that I know on Facebook that has shown an interest in the types of services that you offer. So basically, you can target people that have that, that look like the people who have been on your website. So not just the people that have been on your website, people that look like those people um, in terms of their behaviors online. Um, and uh, you can really measure the results of your ads as well. You can understand the effect of your ads and see exactly how those are working. So setting up and installing Facebook Pixel, if you just do a Google search for Facebook Pixel, you'll find the link on how to set that up. But we're going to be coming back to that and we're going to walk you through that a little bit. Okay. Um, so uh, someone's asking me, um, Liz, uh, thanks for the question. Um, if we built your website, we wouldn't by default set up Facebook Pixel because it is more of an advanced um, marketing tactic. Um, I'm giving you this information for free uh, because we're helping small businesses. So um, normally a lot of businesses, um, companies like us, agencies would charge um, for the setup of Facebook Pixel. But I'm encouraging you all to set that up or reach out to your account manager or your web developer and ask them to do it for you. Um, it can be done um, for free, um, but bear in mind, if you're asking someone to do it, they might just, might just ask for a small admin fee. So just, just bear that in mind because it can take a bit of time to set up. Okay, so we were keeping this session really short and sweet. Um, what I want to do, though, is um, I want to ask if anyone's got any questions on what we've covered so far, because we're keeping this session today very short, within 40 minutes, and that's, that's basically it. So has anyone got any questions? Does anyone want me to look 
look at their website. We've got five minutes left, so it's going to be a quick 45-minute webinar today. Does anyone want me to check their website, their URL, their Google search result, their Bing search result? Give me a business name. Um, pop your business name in the chat, and I'll have a check for you, and I'll share my screen as well. One question from Jen. Presumably you use Facebook Pixel if you use Facebook. Yes, that's right, Jen. Um, uh, but I'd recommend Facebook ads to everyone because, again, it's very cheap. It's pay-per-click. Uh, but I'd only do a Facebook ads campaign if you have Facebook Pixel in your website, on your website. So for those that are running Facebook ads and don't have Facebook Pixel, um, that's a, a big a big no-no for me. Make sure you've got Facebook Pixel installed on your website um, before you run Facebook ads. And you can all run Facebook ads. It's very simple to do. Um, you simply um, go to a post, one of your posts on Facebook and click boost. Um, so... We all know how to do Facebook ads. Okay, so I'm going to, um, got a couple of people sending their URLs and business names in here. Thank you for doing that. Uh, I'm going to go on to one really quickly, and it's um, Bob. Uh, first of all, Bob, you've won the first check. So if you don't mind, I'm going to square my, share my screen. Let me just close a couple of tabs. Okay, so this is Bob's website. Um, an image for you. Uh, beautiful imagery, Bob. Uh, photography. Um, and uh, you do photo shoots, um, fantastic. So I'm sure your work is, I mean, it looks very good. The actual images look brilliant. Um, so first of all, Bob, what I'd recommend is um, the design of the website. 94% of first impressions are design related. So what that means is that people land on your website or land on a website and make a decision straight away within we think well what we know apparently according to google and microsoft up to eight seconds so it could be two seconds three seconds people go to your website look at it yes or no i made my decision i'm going to go to another competitor so you need to really um what i'd focus on bob is the design of the website you've got some brilliant imagery and you, you obviously look like a fantastic photographer so what i think needs to happen here is your website your business your shop window online needs to represent the high quality imagery um that you have um so i'm going to do a little plug for my <laughs> friend um, he, who is a wedding photographer. And um, I mean, I personally built his website. I did it as a favor. Um, and what I wanted to do is capture a real sort of simple look. And so, Bob, I would just want you to kind of, um, um, even though he's a wedding photographer, it applies uh, the same um, for your business, a real simple, modern look to the website. And so I personally built this in our web builder. And it's um, very easy to do and very easy to make a very, very classy looking website so as you can see um simple simple sections clean modern um nice fonts lots of spacing um very clean and modern um the gallery let's have a look very simple gallery um in the style of instagram almost that was the um the spec so um let me just go to one of your galleries um and that's what I would recommend is that you have it in the style of Instagram because everybody is used to that whole block um, structure of Instagram. So image, 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 image. You know, if that makes sense, Bob, I hope that kind of um, is, is, is useful for you. But um, your gallery, as you can see here, there's a couple of issues with the gallery. There's a bit of space down here. So I'd watch out for that. Um, it doesn't look like it would be too hard to rebuild your website bob um to be honest with you it'd be, it's it, it's going to be quite straightforward um you do videography as well um which is great so you've got some good services here um and then you've got the the buttons um i like i really like the way they come in there but i would just be a bit wary of the lack of content the way those buttons are spread apart um etc etc and then look you've got loads of different um pages here what I would do is have this as a um, under your services, under your uh, wedding or your photography pages. Um, you've got them under more, but I would maybe pull these pages and have them under service pages. But yeah, really good photos. Um, it's just it's the way it's laid out. The only thing I would say, Bob, if I go to the home page um, and just look at your title tag, your title tag says about. Um, an image for you, photography and video, um, Bracknell Forest. So you have got some of the keywords and locations in there, but it, the first 
word in your title tag is about. I would remove that word. Um, you don't need it. It's a little bit of a long title tag. Um, wedding photos, the title tag is photographer. Um, yeah, Berkshire near me. You've, you've definitely done some work on the title tags there. So well done on that. But it's missing, if I just go back, it's missing H1, a heading. Um, so there's no content on that page. You need to have content on that page. So again, what I'd recommend is even though this is a very simplistic one, I would have um, content, a little bit of content on every page with um, a, a gallery and imagery, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the way it's laid out is so important. So design. Um, so let me just uh, have a look at, we've got a bit more, a few more, a bit more time and some of this will help, um, will help everyone. I'm just gonna dive into um, another, another website if I may. Let's have a look. I'm not going to get through everyone. Do apologize for that. Um, I'm going to go to, I've got a couple loaded up um, and you'll see your website. So I've got Leo Photographer here. I've got, um, let me just close that. I've got Buford, um, at Buford. I'm just, the first one I'm going to look at though is this one really quickly, the design. I love the homepage, the top of the homepage, the hero image here. And you've got really clear navigation uh, at the top. And then right here as well, that is that is really good. How you've got these simple boxes taking the visitor to that page. Um, fantastic. Um, the design is good. Um, it is it is it is really good. Um, just I wonder if that's uh, yeah. Just uh, I'm just looking at the content. No, it's okay. It looks everything looks really good. I'm just checking to see if it was the right amount of content. The only thing I would say about this is it's missing a title tag, which is the number one factor for SEO, or well, the number one basic essential for SEO. So the title tag on this website is simply home, Stuart House Hotel. That is um, such an easy thing to spot and change. Um, you must change that title tag. The title tag for you should read hotel, um, accommodation, um, and I don't know where you're based, um, North Kings, uh, Kings Lane. So you should have hotel, restaurant, um, Kings Lane, um, for example, in that title tag. Let me just go to the wedding page because I know that weddings are a big part of um, hotels in terms of the return on investment. You're missing a big opportunity um, with this one. Is Again, you've just got weddings in the title tag and the page is not optimized for SEO, which means that you could be coming up higher on Google literally next week or in two weeks if you just make the changes. So in our previous webinars, we talked about title tag optimization and heading optimization. You've got weddings. I think that's the H1. Let me just double check. Um, da, 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 da. It's a H2. So uh, I... Don't know where your H1 is, but it will be somewhere on this page. Um, but you need to have um, the the keyword and maybe the location in, in your heading as well. That really does help with optimization. But really critically, you're missing title tags. Um, you need to change that in the back end of the website. Apart from that, the design is really good. Um, everything's really clear and simple. And you've got clear call to actions to book now. Um, takes me through to a different booking form, which is fine. That's really good. I like it. But you're missing some key SEO. Um, Leah, the photographer, uh, really quickly, um, you've got a long title tag. Um, so just do bear that in mind. It might be a few too many characters. I'd try to keep to 40 to 45 characters. Um, you've got uh, obviously plenty of, of content and I can see what you're doing with the content, which is good. Um, the only thing I'd recommend is design again. Um, I go back to that comment about 94% of first impressions are design related. Well, people make a decision in seconds as to whether they want to use you. And with you being a photographer, your imagery is, is brilliant. You've captured some amazing, I can see who you've taken pictures of here. So absolutely fantastic. You've got a great service and you do all sorts of photography. The only thing I would say is the font. Um, I would not recommend that blue color um, in your font. I think it just slight, slightly cheapens the look of it. Um, I'm, I know this sounds really critical, but I'm just trying to get to the point um you've got a great business and you do great work it's just that that font slightly um lessens the kind of the value or the the the, uh, the you know how good it looks in terms of how visually impressive your website and your business is um so i'd recommend just styling a font maybe ask a designer to help you because um 
even I think I'm a designer sometimes, but I'm not. Uh, but a designer would be able to pick this out really quickly. Um, the font's a little bit too small on this page. Um, you miss it. You, I, I'd recommend having a bit more font as well. Uh, sorry, content. So get a little bit more content on the page just for SEO purposes. I see that you've optimized your title tags again. Well done. That's brilliant. But you need a heading tag. So you need a heading at the top of this page. Um, let me see if I can find a good example of a heading. Well, um, this is actually quite hard to read, ironically. But there, you know, about us. Um, or, or whatever it may say. Um, let me try and find a good example. Pricing. Um, so for you, it would be wedding photography. I would have wedding photography right at the top of this page as a headline just above this content here. Uh, but I like your gallery. Your gallery is very nice. I like that um, style of gallery. So that's really good. I just think the menu, um, the, the styling of the website could be refreshed. Um, bearing in mind... This isn't a criticism as such. Websites need to be redesigned every three years. They go out of, of, of style and trend really quickly. So you're not alone, Leo. You've got a great product, um, but your website, I think, just needs to restyle and redesign just to bring it up to date a little bit um, in terms of design. And uh, so that's just my couple of points um, for one second. We've got one more. We didn't check at Buford. Um, again, this was a lovely looking website. I'm really impressed. And you've designed, you've optimized the title tags. Um, fantastic. Look at this H1 tag here. Luxury Wedding Car London. Let's just check if it is a H1. Yes, it is. Um, I'm just looking at my geeky back end of the website there. Ignore me there. But that is a heading, a H1. And that is the perfect heading. Um, let me go to uh, a different page. You've got really simple headlines and a very um, easy to navigate and easy to read website. Um, look at the layout. It's actually very similar, isn't it, to the one I was just showing you earlier, the one that I, I was designing myself. Um, uh, and, and many of our designers would, would stick to the same structure. Um, it's, it, it's very, very similar in design. So that is a 10 out of 10. Well done. That's fantastic design you've got here. Um, Okay, the prices, yeah, it doesn't have to be too fantastic in design, but then you've got nice, classy layout. Um, I really like the, the way this is designed. So, um, And you've got a, a simple booking form that comes up here as well. Um, fantastic, really good. Every page is optimized. Every page is well designed. Um, and you've even got testimonials at the bottom right. So it's rare that I give a 9 or 10 out of 10, but there we go. That one did get a 9 or 10 out of 10. Um, Couple of questions. Using Wix, there's a traffic light system for SEO. Yes, Gillian, that is enough. So using Wix, using WordPress, using uh, many of these web builders, there's usually a traffic light system and that will tell you if your SEO is looking okay or not. That is enough. Um, it should give you enough warnings for the basics. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, loved Leo's photos. Really good. I agree. Great photos. It looks like you're a bit of a celebrity, celebrity photographer. Um, Da, 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 da. I, I'm going to check. Someone's asking to check title tags. I'm really just going to check one uh, business title tags. Liz Gilmore. Um, the website's not live. It's under construction. So I can't, I, uh, I can't check your title tag, unfortunately. Um, da, 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 let me just see if there's any other questions. Uh, Bob, good to see that you're updating it. Thank you. Hope that wasn't too critical. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry if, if I'm going too far with the criticism, guys. If you need any help or one-to-one -one help, please do reach out to us. Um, okay, so um, looking good, looking good. Da, 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 da. Gillian, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's quite hard to dive into the chat. Um, I think we've got everything uh, looking good here. So I'm just going to check one more website, Double Design. That's uh, so's, um, and we're just going to do one last screen share, if that's all right. Uh, am I pronouncing your uh, name there? I'm really sorry if I'm not. Um, just really checking this very quickly. You're a great graphic designer. It looks like you've been doing this for many years. Um, title tag um, is a little bit too long. Title tag is probably around 70, 80 characters there. It needs to be maybe cut in half, I would say. So really cut that title tag character length in half. Um, logo design, let me just check another title tag. Um, that's better. You've got a shorter title tag there, which is a lot better. And again, this website looks great. Um, the only thing I noticed about the homepage is this pop-up here. 
um, is covering your um, your headline on the home, and I can't seem to get rid of the pop up. So that pink box is covering whatever's sitting behind it. Um, but yeah, great graphics, fantastic. Um, we're keeping this one short and sweet, guys. We've got a couple of big ones that lined up for you tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. Um, so I hope the email marketing stuff was useful. So don't get with email marketing. Have a section on your website to collect emails. Make sure you do that ASAP. Have a sign up to our newsletter. Have a get a 10% off. Whatever it is, the box or the section or the pop-up, just ask for people's email addresses and get their consent um, that, you're, uh, that you'd like to email them in future for future marketing. Um, and then for the email itself, keep it simple. Keep it to the point, have a clear headline, a clear call to action, make sure it goes to a landing page, to a, to a booking form, a contact form. Um, so have all those things set up and you'll be good to go. And it's really important to start using email marketing. So that's a really important part of the mix. Um, thanks everyone. I hope it's been, I hope you've at least taken one or two things from, away from today. We've been run, run, running these webinars for two weeks now. We've got so much content to go um, and we're really excited to, to go through the next um, bits and bobs. We have got Facebook ads. We've got setting up a Google ads campaign. We've got more about SEO. One thing we want to show you about SEO is off-site SEO and backlinks. So how you can get more quality backlinks to your website um, and, your, and, and, and help it boost rankings. So we're going to show you the SEO stuff, the off-site SEO stuff, really this week. We're going to have to get that done this week. So we're going to show you how to write some content and, and write a blog and then get that published somewhere and get a backlink to your website. Um, if you want any help with any of the previous stuff, such as website optimization, um, Google um, My Business, Bing Places, um, or any of the other webinars that we've done, please do get in touch with us, uh, infoserve.com forward slash COVID. Um, we'll be back tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, and we've got some guests coming this week. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope the last two weeks have been useful for you. And I hope you've taken one or two things away from today's session. Stay safe today. And we'll see you tomorrow, 2 p.m., same time. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.